I just finished a run and it was slow. Uh, exactly like how your direct query Power BI reports will be if you don't understand what we're about to talk about in this video. So let's jump in. All right, after a nice long shower and a meal, I'm ready to talk direct query Power BI reports. So direct query Power BI reports are really easy to build poorly. And if you've ever used a badly built direct query Power BI report, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. They're almost unusably slow and the report users will complain about them constantly. Now, building a really good direct query Power BI report, I would argue is just as much art as it is science. And today what I wanna to talk to you about is how you can use Performance Analyzer to view the SQL queries that a direct query report is executing as well as M query parameters, which are a tool that you can use to help build a more efficient report, or at least one that executes more efficient queries. So let's jump into Power BI and let's take a look at two different reports. Okay, so here's the data model of our first report. It has two tables that are both in direct query. So it has a customer table that is in direct query to an order data fact table, and it's joined on customer ID. Now, this is a pretty great uh, setup for Power BI. So this direct query report is actually gonna run pretty fast, but if you notice, when you go ahead and you click this, it's querying order data out of the server. Now, in order to view the SQL queries that this is executing, what you can go ahead and do is you can click the Optimize button, then click Performance Analyzer to see it, and then click Start Recording. When you go through, and you execute a query by essentially changing the model, what you'll notice is that you'll have the action that you took and then you'll have the two visuals that are on the page. So in this case, we've got a slicer and then we have a table. And when you expand these, you can see what they actually did. So here, right, the slicer didn't run a query. But if you expand the table, what you can see is the table executed a query. And we can go ahead and we can copy that query and we can take a look at it in a third party tool. So here it is pasted into Notepad++. Uh, what you'll see is that the top part of what we copied is the actual DAX query that was executed. And then the second part is the actual direct query SQL that was executed. And for now, this is what I wanna focus on. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to select this out and I'm gonna bring this into a SQL formatter. That way we can get it into an even more usable uh, format. So here I just Googled free SQL formatter. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pop this in and then I'm gonna click format this SQL. And here we can see the SQL that that query executed. Now bringing this into SSMS so we can see it nicely formatted with colors, what you'll notice is that it is selecting the first million and one records from then a essentially a subquery, which is then the subquery of our actual orders table, and then it's left outer joining our full customers table, and then finally filtering down the email here. All right, so here's what I actually selected in the slicer, and then it has some logic. Now this is machine generated code. There's a much simpler way to get what we actually wanted, which is we wanted <laughs> the actual orders table, right, with email. So really all we really wanted was customer interjoined on orders filtered down to email. Now Power BI doesn't know this data relationship, right? So it doesn't know that it can do an interjoin and not drop data. So it's not executing the most efficient SQL code that we could write as humans because it's having to generate this code all on its own. So. How can we fix this? Well, one solution that I would suggest is mQuery parameters. So let's talk about that. So here's pretty much the same report, but with orders data in direct query and then customers data in import. And you might notice this little symbol here on the email. And that's because this email column is bound to a parameter or an mQuery parameter that I've set up in Power Query. Now, what is that doing? Well, that what that means is that when I go into this report and I select an email, 
it's actually changing the uh, query parameter in Power Query, which then means when we go into Power Query, we can use that Power Query parameter, right, in our direct query. So if we take a look at this advanced editor, what you'll notice is that we have our SQL practice, right, database that we're connected to, and we've ena enabled cross database folding. We then are converting our list here, or our list of emails from that parameter to uh, essentially a comma separated list with single quotes. And then we are executing our native query that the direct query is actually executing using the parameter in here using text fields. And we've enabled query folding. So what does this now look like when we're looking at the query analyzer, the performance analyzer in Power BI? Well, let's take a look. So here we are back in that report with the query parameters. And if I select an email, what you'll notice is that when I then go in and I go copy query and I bring this back into Notepad++ and I paste it in, what you'll notice is that the SQL query here that it's executing is much easier to read, right? So it goes select a star, all right? And this looks like normal SQL. And that's because a human wrote it, not a machine. So you might be like, well, great. I'm just gonna use M query parameters to build my direct query reports and they're all gonna run super well and be super efficient. Not so fast. You know how when I said at the beginning of this video, this was just as much an art as it is a science? Well, let's take a look at these two reports side by side. So right here is the report that I, I built with mQuery parameters that has the supposedly much prettier, much more efficient SQL with an inner join. If you notice, it executes much slower in total, right, than the report that's direct query. So why is that? Well, these reports are hitting a local database on my computer. And in this case, the code that Power BI is generating is actually much more performant. So when you're building out a direct query report, there's not really a rule that like, hey, this method of querying a database is gonna be way more efficient than this method. What you have to be able to do is you have to be able to sit down, look at the performance data and make educated decisions. Right here, what I just showed you is that what I would guess is more performant actually isn't. So if you don't want your Power BI reports to be slow, what you have to do is sit down and understand your source. Different sources are gonna behave differently depending on all kinds of different factors, data partitioning, volume of data, you name it. You have to be able to sit down and you have to be able to do the testing. And with that, for those of you that were hoping that this was gonna be a magic bullet that would fix your slow report, I'm sorry, it probably wasn't. But hopefully what you learned is that you can use tool, these tools in Power BI to understand why your report is slow and then hopefully look for methods to fix it. So with that, I just wanted to say thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed this content, please consider liking the video and subscribing.